fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you still there? Hey! Two men waited behind a group of huge boulders along the dusty trail leading to the town of Boulderville. The man named Stub Mason owned a cafe in town, but as he rested his rifle on a rock, Mason looked like what he was, a lawless killer. His companion looked anxiously toward the town, He shaded his eyes from glare, but the rays of the sun reflected on the star-shaped badge pinned to his vest. He was Sheriff Black, the law in Boulderville. Stubb, I wish you hadn't insisted on me coming with you. I've done my part. I told you Rex Salter's got the evidence he was after, and that he'd been heading for the county seat to show to the marshal. Sure you've done your part, Sheriff, but I might need help on this job. You're the only one that I can count on to keep quiet. Wouldn't do for folks to know that you're in trouble just as deep as I am. You know I won't talk. You can't afford to. Everyone in town respects you. Even Banker Moffa took you into his confidence when he sent for Salters to investigate things. And I tipped you off about the range detective coming here. That's what you're paid for. Salters should be coming this way in a minute. Well, there ought to be another way to get rid of him, Stubb. Well, there isn't. But how will I explain the murder? You can think up something to account for the killing. Uh, Banker Moffa will be mighty hard to convince. <laughs> You'll convince him to save your own neck. You sure Moffat hasn't seen the evidence? Dead sure. Salters was going for the marshal before showing the evidence to anyone. I... Hey, Stubb. Look at that dust cloud. I see it. Riders coming this way. It must be Salters. Make sure before you shoot. Don't worry, I will. And shoot straight. We don't want any loose ends to tangle us up later. Shut up. I can make them out now. It's Salters, all right. I recognize him and his horse. You got your sights on him? I'll wait till he passes us. Mason's shot was straight and true, and word of Rex Salter's murder spread rapidly throughout the Southwest. Eventually, it reached the ears of the Lone Ranger and Tonto, who were friends of the range detective. The masked man and his Indian companion went to the vicinity of Boulderville and made camp near the town. It was there that the Lone Ranger said, Tonto, we're going to make Rex's killer pay. I want you to go into town. Me go now? Yes. You'll find Chris Moffat in his office at the bank. Rex Salters was working for him at the time he was killed. Give him this silver bullet and find out when he can see me. (laughs) 
It was mid-afternoon when Sheriff Black entered banker Chris Moffat's office. Come in, Sheriff. Come in. The cashier said you wanted to see me, Craig. I do. Sit down. Thanks. Mighty hot day. Yes. <clears throat> what progress are you making in the soldier's killing? I'm still investigating it. Have you learned anything definite about who may have killed him? No, I haven't. Sort of a mystery. How do you mean, Jeff? Well, that detective had a lot of enemies. Not here in town that I know of, but from other places. Now, I was talking it over with Stub Mason today. He said he'd noticed several drifters come through his place lately. Yes, go on. Well, any one of those drifters could have been looking for Salters to square a grudge. You have no proof of that. Well, maybe I haven't got a proof of it, but it's the logical thing to suspect. Why? Well, as far as I know, you and I are the only ones who knew why Rex Salters was in town. You hired him to come here and investigate certain goings on. I didn't kill him. You certainly didn't. So it must have been one of those drifters who shot him to swear a grudge. Pardon me, Mr. Moffat. Yes, what is it, Joe? There's an Indian out here. He insists on seeing you. An Indian? Well, have him wait. I have several appointments. Well, I told him that. He said for me to show this to you. What is it? A bullet. A silver bullet. Yes, I see. Uh, well, Sheriff, I uh, just wanted to know if you'd learned anything new. That's all. I won't delay you any longer. Yeah. If I learn anything, Chris... You'll be the first to hear about yeah, it. Thank you, thank you. Adios. Adios, Chef. I'll tell the Indian to come back later. In an hour, say? No, no, no. Send him in immediately. Mr. Moffat, there's others waiting. Well, let them wait. I'll send the Indian in here and see that we are not interrupted. Well, yes, sir. I'll send him right in. Hey, Stubb. Stop Mason. Howdy, Sheriff. You look excited about something. You'll be too when I tell you what I know. Let's go into your office. I don't want to talk out here in the cafe. All right. Take over, Bill. Going in the office for a few minutes. Go right ahead, Stubb. I'll look at you, Mason. Now, what's on your mind? Wait, let me sit down. I'm all out of wind. Let's hear it. Stubb, we're in a peck of trouble. About that detective? Yeah, I told you you shouldn't have shot him. I knew we'd get into a jam, a worse jam than we're in already. How are we in a jam about him? Chris Moffat's called in the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Yeah. Did Chris tell you that? No, but I know it. Oh, you're crazy. <laughs> Where'd you pick up that story? I was talking to Chris when an Indian came in the bank and wanted to see him. As Sheriff Black told about the silver bullet, the smile disappeared from the face of Stubb Mason, owner of the Lodestone Cafe. Did you see the engine? You bet I did. I took a good look at him as I went through the bank. Anyone with him? No, he was alone. I waited till he went into the banker's office. Then I hurried over here to tell you about it. Well, Sheriff, I guess you're right after all. That silver bullet proves it. Do you think that engine's still at the bank? I reckon he might be. Why? Well, get on your horse and follow him when he leaves town. You'll find the Lone Ranger waiting for him somewhere. What if I do find the Lone Ranger? Put a bullet through him, and another one through that engine. Oh, no, no, not me. I don't think Chris Moffat is suspicious of me so far. But if something happened to the Lone Ranger, he'd start putting two and two together. Uh, you got something there. Uh, then I'll follow the engine. Just a minute now, Stubb. You kill the masked man, and I'll still get blamed for you it. You stay here in the cafe till I get back. You'll have plenty of witnesses to swear you never left here. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have an alibi, wouldn't I? Now get outside and start mixing with the customers. Be back after dark. Push out, both of them. Whoa, whoa, steady. Well, what delayed you, Tonto? I expected you back before sundown. Me leave town a long time before sundown. But a feller follow me. Me wait till night come, then lose him. A man followed you? That right. Him, big feller. Wear a big black hat like gambler. Him ride bay horse with white spot on nose. When we come out of bank, him follow. But me see him, me lose him. Are you sure you lost him? Uh-huh. Oh. Did you see Chris Moffat, the banker? Uh -huh. Him say him meet you at bank tonight. Hmm. You were followed. It would be a mistake for me to meet Moffat tonight. Someone knows we're in the vicinity and why we're here. Now that he's lost your trail, he'll be watching the bank. Or at least watching Moffat. But bankers say no one know about us come see him. Him say him tell nobody. The man who tried to follow you knows about it. Oh, uh, did Moffat tell you anything about the murder of Rex Solers? 
Sheriff think maybe Drifter kill him. Sheriff say many crooks hate Salters. Kill him for grudge. That's possible, but I doubt it. Salters came to Boulderville to arrest outlaws who've been operating around here. I believe that they, whoever they are, found out about it and killed him. Yeah, that's what Banker think. Him glad you come to help. Taro, you'll have to go back to Chris Moffat. Tell him you were followed, and you'll see why I can't meet him tonight. Ah. I'll wear a disguise into town and try to learn the identity of the man who followed you. It's important that we know who he is. Uh Ah, me help put on disguise. All right. And I'll tell you how you can get a message to Moffat without being seen by anyone who might be watching the bank. The sheriff was waiting when Stubb returned to the cafe after losing track of Toto. Hey, Stubb, where in thunder have you been? Shut up, Sheriff. I want everyone in the cafe to hear you. But you've been gone for hours. I thought maybe you'd run into trouble with a lone ranger. Did you? No, I never set eyes on him. Followed that engine for hours. Then when it got dark, he gave me the slip. When I finally decided to come back to town, I got lost for an hour before I found the trail again. You don't say. The Indian must have known you was following him. There's no doubt of that. I found out one thing. You did? What? Chris Moffat's expecting to meet the Lone Ranger tonight. How do you know that? Well, as I rode into town, I saw him go into the bank. I stopped and waited. In a couple of minutes, he lit the lamp in his office. Then I heard him unlock the side door. Well, he never goes to the bank at night. I know he doesn't. He's figuring on meeting the masked man. Stubb, I've got an idea. Now, if you sneak over there and hide in the old wagon bar across the street... You could put a bullet through the Lone Ranger when he shows up. Oh, no, Sheriff. That mask hombre's too smart for that. How do you mean? He knows by now that I tried to follow this Indian friend of his. So he'll figure that someone will be laying for him if he goes to see Chris Moffat tonight. Yeah, I guess he would at that. But he'll try to get word to Chris, that's for sure. And when he does, I want you to be on hand. Me? Yes, you. Now, here's what I want you to do. And you got to get right over there. Banker Chris Moffat sat in his office awaiting the Lone Ranger. Presently, there was a knock at the side door. Yes, yes, come in, come in. Evening, Chris. Oh. Who's you, Sheriff? Yes, I just happened to be passing down this way and saw a light in your office. Thought maybe I'd better investigate. Anything wrong? Hey, no, no, I have some work to do tonight, that's all. Well, I'm glad you're here. I want to have a talk with you. Well, can't you drop in tomorrow? I... Chris, this is mighty important. Well, let me make it brief, huh? I've been thinking about the murder of that detective you hired. Whoever it was who did it likely got hold of the evidence he came here to find. We've discussed that, Jeff. Yes, I know we have. But it come to me tonight that whoever killed Rex Salters must have learned that you hired him. Now, in that case, the killer might try to get you. Uh, I'm not afraid of that. But you should be. And as sheriff, I'm responsible for your safety. I'm aiming to put a guard with you day and night. <laughs> oh, no, you're not. <laughs> well, that's ridiculous, Sheriff. No one's going to try to hurt me. That's eh? what you think. But if anything should happen to you, Chris, the whole town would blame me for not protecting you. Oh, that. nonsense. Why, uh, hey, what was that? Uh, something struck the door, the side door. I'll see you about it. Uh, no, no, Sheriff. Let me go to the door. Oh, stay back, Chris. You might get hurt. Uh, hey, look at this. Uh, what? An arrow stuck in the door. Yeah, I'll get it. There's a piece of paper tied to that arrow. Yeah. Let me see what it is. Never mind, Sheriff. I'll examine it. Now you see, Chris, why you need a guard. Someone sending you warning notes, I'll bet you. What to say? Hey, it's, uh, it's nothing important, Sheriff. Don't get excited about it. Now I've got to get back to my work. If you say it's not important, I'll take your word for it, Chris. But I still think you need a guard. I don't. That settles it. Now, good night, Sheriff. Good night, Chris. Oh, go on. I've got to tell Stub Mason what happened. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue our story. After Tonto had delivered a note to the banker, Chris Moffat, he hurried to the edge of town where the Lone Ranger, wearing a disguise, was waiting with Scout and Silver. Tonto reported what he had done, then told that he had seen the sheriff in the banker's office. Me wait. Soon sheriff come out. Him run plenty fast. Me follow to cafe. In cafe, him talk with big feller who follow me out of town today. Him own cafe. Stub Mason, he's owner of the cafe. So he's a man who followed you. Uh-huh, that right. Tonto, did you see anyone near the bank when you followed the sheriff? No, no one there. And no guards are posted outside. Steady Silver. Steady Scout. Where we go now? We go tell Chris Moffat what you've learned. And I'm going to stub Mason's cafe. Seems to be some connection between Mason and the sheriff. I want to find out what it is. One Silver. Get him up, Scout. The Lone Ranger wore his usual clothing and his heavy guns after leaving Toto and the banker. But instead of his mask, he had changed his complexion and marked a heavy scar on one side of his face. As a disguise, it was effective. Sitting in the cafe, he looked like a professional gunfighter. He could see the sheriff talking to Stubb, but he couldn't hear the conversation. Chris wouldn't show you the note or even talk about it, Sheriff? No, Stubb, he wouldn't say a thing. Acted mighty huffy, too. He as much as told me to get out and stay out. Ah, then he's suspicious of you. He let you in on his plans when he hired that detective. But he's telling you nothing about the Lone Ranger. You're right. He is suspicious for some reason. The sheriff, we're in a tough spot. I know we are, Stubb. We've got to do something. Now, wait a minute. Take a look at that big fella sitting over in the corner. Huh? Which one you mean, Stubb? One with a fancy gun. Yeah, a drifter. And a gunslinging drifter if I ever saw one. Look at that scar across his face. Yeah. What about him? Let's have a talk with him. He might be just the fellow we're looking for. I don't get you, Stump. You will. Just let me do the talk. How do you fit in this picture, Chef? I thought it was the job of a law dog to prevent killing. He's got his reasons. And with the law in Boulderville back of your gunslinger, you won't have to worry about nothing. Savvy? Yeah, that's savvy. You'll take the job? I'm hardly in a position to turn it down. Good. The sheriff will cover it up for you. Now come along. I'll fix you up with the room. The Lone Ranger was shown to a room over the cafe. When he was alone, he put on his mask to cover the disguise, then left the room by means of a rope out the window. He hurried to the bank where Tonto and Moffat were waiting. I've, uh, I've been hired to kill you, Moffat. But you kill me? <laughs> In the cafe, I wore a disguise instead of this mask. Mason, the sheriff, thought I was a gunman. I don't understand, sir. Up Mason and the sheriff think you know too much. The sheriff? Yes. He and Mason are working hand in hand. They know you've called me in to help solve the soldier's murder. But how could they know? I haven't told anyone about it. The sheriff was here when Tonto sent you the silver bullet. Oh, and he knew what it meant. Undoubtedly. They hired you to kill me. Yes. (laughs) I'm I'm to kill the Lone Ranger, too. What? (laughs) (laughs) They didn't suspect that they were talking to the Lone Ranger. eh? No, hardly. (laughs) When is all this killing supposed to take place? Tomorrow night. Right now, I'm supposed to be in a room over the cafe. I came here secretly to make plans with you. Will I do anything you suggest? Good. Tomorrow, I'll call on the sheriff. Tell him I'm to meet you here tomorrow night at ten. But why should I tell him that? The banker listened attentively while the Lone Ranger outlined a carefully thought-out plan. He nodded and smiled approvingly from time to time as the masked man talked, and then agreed to follow the instructions to the letter. The next day, Chris Moffat welcomed the sheriff when the lawman came to the bank. He told the sheriff about the aid he was receiving from the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? You don't mean it, Chris. Yes, Sheriff. He's going to help us solve that soldier's case. I would have told you about it last night, but I wasn't sure when he'd arrive. He'll be here at ten tonight. Then I'm putting a guard right here with you. Yes, sir, I am. And after all, I guess you're right about that, Sheriff. I wouldn't want the same thing to happen to the Lone Ranger that happened to Rick Salter. Oh, you bet you don't. Now, I've got just the man for the job. Who you have? Who is he? He's a big man, a scar across his face. I swore him in as a deputy last night. 
I'll send him down here tonight to stand guard. I'll be looking for him. It was early evening when the sheriff entered Stub Mason's private office to find the latter passing the time in a game of solitaire. Come in, Sheriff. I was waiting for you. Uh, plenty hot tonight. Take your coat off. We play a couple of hands of rummy while we're waiting. I don't mind if I do. Might as well slip off my gun belt, too, while I'm at it. Sure, sure. Make yourself comfortable. Hang your shooting iron up there alongside of mine. All right. There we are. Feel them up, Stub. All right. <laughs> Nothing like a game of cards to quiet the nerves. You're right about that. Howdy. Huh? Coming in the back door, the Lone Ranger was once more without his mask. He wore the disguise just as he had on the preceding evening when Brown and Mason had hired him for their murder job. Oh, it's you. Thought you were at the bank. I'm on my way now. Want to ask when I get paid for this job? You'll get it, don't worry. Sure, you've got nothing to worry about. I don't do business that way. I want at least part of it now. You do, huh? No pay, no job. All right. Here. See this $1,000 bill? Yeah. I see it. I tear it in two. Here's half of it. When you've done the job, you get the other half. That's good enough. Thanks. Hey, Stubb, look through the door there. What? See that engine looking in here? Is he the... Hey, that's him. That's a redskin. I trailed out of town. Come on, Sheriff. Let's grab him. Hurry, Stubb. He's starting for the door. Tonto Hartley reached the boardwalk before Stubb Mason and the Sheriff grabbed him and dragged All him right. back into the office. You let me go. We do nothing. Shut up before I come with you. Shut the door, Sheriff. All right. I think the door was left open. We'd never have seen him snooping out there. You got some rope here, Stubb? We'll tie him up. No need to tie him, Sheriff. Here are your handcuffs. What? Tuff him to a chair. Where'd you get them? Out of the pocket of your coat, hanging on the rack. Hurry up, Sheriff. Snap him on this redskin. Let me have him. Now sit down in that chair, redskin. Yeah. Take care of you right now. There, he's locked to the rung. He won't get away. Hand me my gun. Here you are, Mason. I guess this is yours. Yeah, that's mine. The other's the Sheriff. Now, Injun, we know who you are and you know we do. So start talking. And fast. You not shoot, me tell. That's good sense. What are you doing snooping to my place? Me come to town with friend. Me come here, wait, while him talk with banker. Hey, did you hear that, Sheriff? He says his friend is talking with the bank. Yeah. So he's there now. Well, boys, we got to get moving and fast. You bet we have. He'll be out and gone if we don't. Let me get my coat and gun belt. Yeah, hand me mine too, Sheriff. Come on, Sky. What about the Indian? He can't get away. We finish with him when we get back. And one peep out of you, Injun, and I'll have one of my boys outside put a bullet through you. Me not yell. Me be quiet. There's two horses. One's the engine's and that big white one is a mask man. I've heard plenty about that big stallion. Name is Silver. The bank is in his office. The lamp is lit. Mm, and the blind is drawn. Me and the sheriff will wait for you here. Now get in there and do your job, mister. You won't mind me riding off on that big white horse, will you? No, you can have him to get away on. I'll have the other half of that thousand dollar bill waiting for you when you come out. The bank is expecting me. I'll get in easily enough. The banker knew from the conversation of the previous evening that the Lone Ranger would appear without his mask, disguised as the gunman. The sheriff and Stubb watched carefully, then waited after the Lone Ranger entered the office of Chris Moffat. <laughs> he thinks we're fools enough to let him get away. Better get your gun ready, Stubb. As soon as he kills the banker and the Lone Ranger, we'll rush in. <laughs> and after it's all over, we can tell the folks we shot him for killing those two. Sure, we'll say we were trailing him for the range detective's murder. But we got down here too late to prevent him shooting me. <laughs> Did you hear that, Sheriff? Yeah, two shots. One for Moffat and one for the mask. Ah, let's go kill that gunsling. The Sheriff and Mason ran to the bank and threw the side door into Mason's office. They saw two men lying on the floor. One was the banker. The other wore a mask. Yeah, he got them both. Yeah, so this is a lone ranger we've heard so much about. Hey, ah, stop. Ah. Take a look at the way he's dressed. Ah. Just like that gunslinger we hired to kill these two. Only difference is he's wearing a mask. Hey, where is that gunslinger? He should be here. Yeah, where'd he go? Now, the door into the bank is open. Maybe he's in there looking for cash. Yeah, Hold on, Stubb. This masked man's not dead. He's breathing. What? I get it. Shoot him. No, you get... don't. Hey, Stop. hey. Shoot my arm. Drop those guns. 
Yeah. It's the judge, Judge Winters. I'm not the only one who was waiting in the bank. We oh. heard it all. We heard you. Drop that gun. You're covered. Well, Keep them covered, Judge. You're, you're not dead. Not even hurt. Oh, no, and neither is the banker. Get up, Chris. The act is over. You're the one that... Yes, when you saw me without my mask, you hired me to commit a double murder. And we heard your own admission to the same. You, I was you... ready for you, Sheriff. I had my gun handy while I lay on the floor, acting but dead. That mask. I put it on as soon as I came into this office after leaving you two crooks. Is that Tonto? Yes. Come in, Tonto. The Indian. You left him handcuffed, Sheriff. But while you were out of the cafe to chase him, I fixed the lock on the handcuffs so it wouldn't stay closed. Well, of all the... Be quiet. What did you find, Tonto? Here. Here evidence you tell me to look for in Stub Mason's yeah. desk. Evidence? What evidence is he talking about? The evidence Stub Mason the sheriff took from my friend Rex Saulders when they killed him. Proof that the sheriff and Mason wanted suppressed. Take charge of it, Chris. Well, I guess that's all we need to hang both of them. These people saw how they conspired to kill you and me. Now they know why. To silence both of us. They silence Saulders. Well, our work here is done. Adios, Moffat, Judge Winters. Adios. Stub Mason, you got me into this. Oh, shut up, Sheriff. <laughs> the next time you hire a gunslinger, you better make sure he's not the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer, 